Hello, New Jersey. Hey, so nice to be home, back in my home state. Um, thank you so much for coming out today. You guys know kind of how the Q&As work. There's a microphone over there and one over there. So if you have questions for today's guests, I would suggest getting in line because we're going to go over something first and we don't have a ton of time. So if you want to ask our guest a question, just start getting in line now. But you guys are probably here for him. He's from Tom's River, New Jersey. Let's take a closer look at today's Q&A guest. Welcome to the Garden State, New York's kid brother. Never big enough or good enough. Being small isn't a handicap here. Does this look like the place where the answer can be found? You know, if you're from here, you're either tough or you think you're tough. Most likely you think you're tough, you know, and not everybody's that tough. You know, a lot of kids would end up scrapping because of that. You know, a lot of his friends were taller and bigger, and he was smaller. I'm sure some kids may got picked on a little bit and they just put their head down and walk away. I, I wouldn't do that. You know, I would stand up for myself and, uh, you know, it caused me to having to, to defend myself at times. Frankie is a scrapper. He was the little guy, he would get picked on. He never started the fight, but he would always finish it. Go, Frankie, go! It's always the big guys, too. They, they see this little guy, they're trying to impress a girl, so they would pick on him and then they would end up with their arm, like, behind their back on the ground. He never would give up. He, that's his attitude never giving up and I'm, I'm sure if you've seen his fights <laughs> you'll know he just is not a quitter switching stances is that oh, some of the events that are happening at International Fight Week this July. So let's see if we can bring it up on the screen so you guys see what you're in for. It's July 7th through the 12th in Las Vegas, of course. So obviously things are going to be added to this. Um, it's a continued work in progress, but that's some of the stuff you can go to, a pool party with some of the fighters and the ring girls. You guys know you want to go. Um, there's Q&As, weigh-ins, the fight, obviously. Frankie, UFC 189. You'll be paying attention to that. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Main event, I'm sure you're interested in. A little bit, little Frankie bit. will be there signing autographs, going to fan events. So if you don't have your tickets yet, be sure to go to UFCFightWeek.com. UFC.com has all the info, too. I would suggest going. It's a good time. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. Don't, don't miss out. This guy's going. Oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're up here, Frankie. Nice to be in front of your people. Yes, good to be home. <laughs> good to be home. Yeah. Jersey, Jersey. Yeah. All right, you were in line right away. Let's go over here. What's up, Frankie? What's up, man? Uh, I was wondering what you thought of the uh, Ally Quinta fight and the post-fight speech, that whole thing. Did you, did you catch it? You know, I, I was running around my kids' baseball practice that day, but uh, I, mean, I heard about it. Um, I mean, it was a close fight. You know, obviously, it, it happens all the time. Uh, I think Al was just emotional. I don't blame him for, uh, for getting at these guys, for bowing them. Uh, you know, we put a lot in, in, into what we do, and um, getting booed isn't, isn't what we want. But... Uh, Sometimes you got to put your, your emotions in check, but hey, I can't blame him for uh, speaking his mind. Uh, thank you. You got it. All the senoritas probably loved that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello. So you've logged uh, more time in the octagon than almost anyone. Uh, just wondering, do you know uh, like how many more years you want to keep fighting for? Or uh, I don't want to put a number on it, but as long as my body feels good and, and I'm successful, you know, I don't want to be getting beat up all the time or anything like that. So. Uh, if I'm winning and uh, my body's holding up, I'll do it as long as I can. And also, uh, what's your prediction on Aldo against uh, McGregor? Aldo McGregor, I, you know, I think it's a favorable matchup for, for McGregor, um, but uh, I, I'm going to go with the champ. I, I think Aldo is just, uh, a, you know, he hasn't fought anybody like Aldo yet. Do you have a preference who you would face if you beat Uriah in uh, Manila that between Jose and Connor? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 I 
it doesn't matter. I want the belt, but uh, you know the fact that uh, Jose's beaten me before, and, uh, and you know he's been at the top for so long. I think I, I'd be like, I, I'd like to be the one to be able to, to take the belt from him. Yeah, take the belt and avenge the loss. Exactly. All at once. All right. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, I just want to say, uh, actually, I took my girl uh, to your fight in Austin. It was our first time going to a fight. She really enjoyed it, so I just wanted to say. You're sure, man. You're a good guy. I uh, kept my bragging rights, so it was good. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, actually, you took my question, though, Megan. But uh, uh, my, I have another question. My question is, actually, you know, it seems like eventually down the line, you know, you will eventually fight McGregor. You will uh, have to deal with that kind of bravado. Uh, how do you think you'd be able to handle that kind of, that kind of trash talk, the kind of in-your-face type of thing? You don't yeah, seem I mean, like a guy I, that I think you really don't know how you'd handle it until, until it happens. You know, uh, I'm not one to really get, get too mixed up with it. I think Aldo's doing a great job, kind of just keeping to himself and worrying about the fight itself. But, uh, you know, um, I think there's only, I, I don't know about that world tour. It's like, I feel like everyone's going to meet their, meet their limit. There's only so much you can take. But, uh, you know, you got to try to keep it professional. But, you know, sometimes emotions definitely get carried away. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see when we cross that bridge. Do you, and one last question. Do you think... Um, I mean, I don't know if you saw any of the stuff from any of the stuff from the World Tour. I mean, they're they're pretty brutal, though, outside of like you know, obviously Brazil. But uh, you think uh, maybe some of the people, maybe they crossed the line. I understand it's part of the sport, but you know, there really was no respect given to him. Yeah, he definitely deserves respect. I mean, uh, what he's done in his career uh, speaks for itself. So, uh, uh, you know, for them to kind of disrespect Aldo, Aldo is definitely a, a slap in the face. But uh, I mean, it's part of it. You know what I mean? They're definitely you, know, you go you go to McGregor's home, home country. You know, they're going to definitely ride for him. All right, man. Thank you. You're always like relaxed and calm. I feel like nothing really bothers you. We see you during fight week, and you're just, you know, Frank. Yeah, it's it keep cool. But you know, if someone's gonna say something to my face, I'm sure I'd have to say something back. You know what I mean? But that's the New you know, Jersey. Through, through, you. through an interview or something like that, it doesn't matter because it's not real. Right. right. Frankie. Right there you here. go. There you go. So I need a straightforward answer. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. been given a lot of fluff. Conor McGregor is fighting for the belt. Does he deserve the title shot? And he's yet to fight any contender that's even up for the belt. He hasn't fought n nobody in the top five yet, and he's fighting for the belt. Do you think he deserves that shot? To me, in, in, in fighting, I mean, in life, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you, what you get. And he got it. So that's, that's the bottom line, you know. He, whether he got it from running his mouth or, or, or whatnot, but he, you know, he's, everybody he's came across, he's beat, you know, in, in devastating fashion. So I say, you know, he's got it, and that, that's all that matters. Whether he deserves it or not, that's in the past. It don't matter. He's, he has it on July 11th, so what's, what he does with it is what counts. All right. Nice answer. Yeah, look at that. Oh, political. <laughs> Frankie! What's, what's up, up buddy? Man? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm a big we're fan of yours. I've been a fan of yours for a while. I think you're awesome. I actually first found out about you through my cousin, and he was like, oh, you got to hear this Frankie Edgar guy. is amazing. I'm like, i never heard of him before. And then I saw you fight, and I was like, man, he's a beast. But anyway, Frankie, you're <laughs> awesome. Um, I got a couple questions for you. I wrote them down so I don't forget. Um, I saw a thing on YouTube. It was a simulation with uh, UFC, the EA game, and it had you against Uriah Faber. And you won by uh, a head kick and then follow-up punches. How do you see yourself beating him? That, that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> you know, hey, head kick, follow-up punches. You know, I don't know. I don't really uh, envision a certain way I'm going to beat someone. I just kind of go in there, put my head down, and go to work. Uh, all my fights are the same. I'm, I'm going to be active. I'm going to throw punches on my feet. The takedown's there. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for ground and pound. I'm going to look for a submission. You know, I'm pretty simple. It's, uh, that's always my game plan. You're the man. Um, where are you training out of for this fight camp? I'm, in, I'm home. I'm here, man. I'm in Jersey. So, uh, Ricardo Almeida, Mark Henry, Anderson Franca, same team I've been working with for the past uh, three, four years now. Awesome, man. Uh, one more question for you. If Aldo was out of the picture and you had to either choose Connor or uh, Chad Mendez to fight, who would you decide to fight? You know, I think Chad uh, just stylistically would be, be the tougher matchup. So, uh, you know, I always go for the tougher guy. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. That'd be a fun fight. It's good, Frankie. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. You? All right, all right. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, I know obviously what you're doing right now in the featherweight division, you, you know, you, you, uh, you're up there for a title shot and everything, but have you ever thought about may possibly making a, you know, making a jump back up to lightweight or? 
I, I'm never, uh, you know, that was my home for a while. I held a belt there. So uh, if the right opportunity arose. I, or, I feel, I feel I like, did, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Go ahead. No, yeah. Go I, ahead, I feel like the guy who's holding it right now, you know, I, I feel like that really shook it up a lot, you know, that he ended up beating Anthony. So Yeah, no, uh, you know, uh, Rafael, as a friend of mine, he did a phenomenal job. I mean, if, if you got to fight Pettis a certain way, that, that's the way you fight him. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I would never uh, say no to, to, to any fight, really. 55 was my home for a long time. Uh, you know, like I said, if, if the right opportunity arises, who knows? All right, and uh, another question, considering you just said that. Considering he's your friend, would you fight Dos Anjos? Uh, I mean, right now I wouldn't have to because I mean I, I'm I'm on my, my way to this 45 pound title. I'm gonna say no just for right. now, for now, okay. no right. for now. Yeah. All right, Keep thanks, Frank. Yeah. Um, that being said, what's more likely, you go back to lightweight or you try your luck at bantamweight? I'm gonna get that 45 pound title. That's the most likely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good answer. <laughs> Frankie Meg, and thanks again for doing this today, guys. Uh, Frankie, we talked on Twitter this week. Uh, you accepted a challenge of mine. Oh, gosh. Oh, I know yeah. what this is. Here we go. Here we go. I have, a, I have a question about your upcoming fight with Uriah. Do you think he's the type of guy that would use an extra frosting packet on his toaster strudel, leaving you with none? You, you probably win that competition you set up yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, I'll tell you what. This guy said he wanted to know the weirdest question Frankie's ever been That's asked. A one, so That's he a good one, man. So he can one-up it. I'm going to say, you know what, he's the, 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 you know, the head of alpha male, and he seems to treat his guys good. I, I think he would save it for me. I do. I do. I don't think he would use it at all. Yeah. He doesn't, like, eat anything that's not, like, a honeycomb or something. So. He goes dry. He's, <laughs> he goes dry. I don't know. <laughs> that took a turn. <laughs> Let's go over there. Keep it moving. Hey, Frankie, how you doing? What's up, man? Big fan, man. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Just had two questions. Um, what's your prediction on Manny Pacquiao, Mayweather, and uh, what's your favorite place to eat down the shore? Pacquiao, Mayweather, uh, that's it's a tough one. I, again, I kind of uh, heard Dana talk about it. He kind of had a good, good take on it. I think five years ago, I, I would have went with Pacquiao, but, um, you know, now that... Uh, He's a little, you know, a little bit slowed down, and Mayweather's been on such a tear. He's got such good defense. Oh, I'm going to go with Mayweather. Okay. And, and at shore, uh, down the shore. That's more important, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, man, you know this place called Basil Tees in Red Bank? Okay. I love it. Italian? It's One Italian, person knows yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good beer. Yeah, that's not bad either. <laughs> How you doing, Frankie? Thanks for coming out. Just want to say, when it comes to displaying heart of a champion, you are the champion. Thank All your you. fights, you Thank always you. come back. I've never seen that. I mean, Rocky has nothing on you. <laughs> you are the champion, bro. Thank you. Forget about McGregor and all that crap. I'm going to talk about something. One of the greatest fights of all time, you and Maynard Three Trilogy in Houston Fan Expo was awesome. After the fight, I don't know if you remember my face. I'm sitting at the bar, drinking a Corona, minding my own business, celebrating your victory. You come in. All mayhem breaks loose. Remember that lobby? I do, I do, I do. You had some small children with you, your family. Me, being security, my security instincts kicked in. I went over there to help you out. I we, do, I do remember. You got me on the elevator, man. Yeah, we <laughs> gathered everybody up, put you on the elevator. I took about three or four shots to the face, but it's all right. I had a heart just like you. Got you upstairs, you and we took this picture. And I just want to thank you for it. No, it's my right pleasure. after your fight, after your victory. Awesome, man. I just wanted to know, is there any way I can get you to sign this for me, my brother? Absolutely. Yeah, Answer, yeah. autographs yeah. and pictures we'll do later. Just make sure you come down here, and we'll have Frankie come over here after. I got you. Yeah. I got you. He, he's going to stick around for a few minutes. Don't worry. What's going on, Frankie? I'm glad you came out today. Thank you. Hey, uh, with all your success and everything that you've done, hold the belt and everything, do you find it kind of laughable they didn't even let you in the house? Oh, uh, with the tough house? Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I didn't end up in there. I'll be honest. I mean, uh. <laughs> I coached that show, and that was kind of brutal enough. But uh, you know, being in that house, is, it's rough, man. You don't, you know, don't have contact. It with just seems funny. Dana weeks. makes these calls all wrong sometimes. I don't think it's really Dana. You know, I, I, I <laughs> think it's, it's, it's more, process. it's more like the TV producers and stuff. You know, I, I, I think I made it to that level, and then you know, I'm, I'm kind of a quiet guy. I'm not that cocky and stuff like that. So uh, you've definitely put egg on their me. face in, with the career you've given them. Yeah, you know, you've, I'll be honest though. Trying, trying good, out for the show got me in the UFC though. Because then I, I filled in for someone probably a couple weeks after, after that tryout. So it all worked out. Damn glad you did, brother. Thank you. That happens kind of frequently. People aren't able to do the ultimate fighter for whatever reason, and then they end up in the UFC. Right. John Jones actually was denied from the show, too. Yeah. Look so, at that. Yeah. 
Works out for you guys. John Jones, Frank Edder, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Frank. I've come in from uh, Scotland, Edinburgh, yesterday, so this is a great honor for me to speak to you. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, obviously, Mendes winning a couple of weeks ago, and you're fighting uh, Faber. Do you think you might have to go through Mendes to get that number one shot? Because he's also on a tear as well. Um, but he's obviously had a, a couple of shots already and lost. Um, but do you think that fight makes sense, or do you think will you be sort of going in telling Uncle Dana, give me that title shot? Because obviously Mendy's had uh, a few title shots already. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I get it right away. You know, I kind of thought you know a win over Cub would have gotten me in that. Um, but uh, you know, now I'm fighting Uriah, and uh, the fact that Mendes has fought him twice and much more recently than I have. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that I get it right away. And the uh, second one is, well, we've got another two. Uh, what's your prediction for Machida or Rockhold? Who do you think is going to take that I mean, that's, that's, that's a tough one to pick. Yeah. You know, uh, Machida just is such an unorthodox fighter. Um, but I think uh, I, I'm going to go with Rockhold. But, uh, yeah. again, it's kind of a toss-up, man. I think yeah. Machida, he, he can catch you with, with, with a shot, you know, at, at any time. But if that I'm going to pick, punch. I'll pick Rockhold. Yeah, and uh, are you going to come fight in the UK, man? Come holler your boys. Maybe, man, maybe. Like, <laughs> that was basically enough. <laughs> no, hey, oh, well, you know, I'm going, I'm going to the Philippines. And we'll, 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 you know, hopefully yeah. we'll get the Philippines, up, man. Come to the hopefully UK. we end up in Jersey. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, if we thanks, get a fight man. in Madison Square Madison Garden. Madison Square Garden, that, that could work. That could work. Yeah. Thanks for your time, man. We really appreciate it, man. It, man. When um, you got offered the fight with Uriah, there were talks that you guys were supposed to fight a few years ago. Is there truth to that? Like, how far did it go along? Uh, not, not so much that we were supposed to fight. I think we were going to possibly, when I did the Ultimate Fighter show, he might have been the coach. But I think the, the weight class was kind of up in the air, so it never it never happened. But uh, May 16th, it's May happening. 16th. <laughs> What's going on, Frankie? What's up? Um, you definitely have the heart of a warrior, and uh, I know you go into all your fights 100%, and I don't think anyone in the UFC can compare with your stamina and everything. And uh, when you fought Aldo the first time, I'm pretty sure you were in the best shape of your life. What does that do to you mentally if you fight him again? Like, how are you going to prepare for that? What are you going to do different? Uh, you know, I thought I, fought, I thought I fought him well. You know, it was, it was a close fight. Uh, you know, I mean, if you look at the, the stats, I mean, the stats really don't matter that much. But, you know, I outstruck on 3, 4, and 5. I felt I started coming on as the fight went on, so... Uh, maybe just come out the gate a little bit stronger this time around. But, you know, it was, it was also a long time ago. So, you know, when, when we get there, you know, it's, uh, you know, I have to sit down with my coaches and come up with even, you know, a new, new game plan. All right, and I have one more question. What would you have done if uh, McGregor grabbed your belt like that? You know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I guess in the heat of the moment, I think I would have been pretty pissed off, you know, and uh, might have tackled Dana to get to him, you know what I mean? But, uh I, you know, to be honest, I don't even think that's Aldo's belt. His belt's at home. Yeah. So it, that's it a prop belt. belt. So I would be like, well, let's go ahead and take that belt. It ain't even a real to belt. Me, to me, know? he looks scared. If somebody grabs something that you earned and that belongs to you, if someone grabs it like that, you do whatever you got to do to take that back. And I yeah. think he's just getting in his head. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's getting his head. Aldo's been here for so long, man. It's, it's going to be tough to get in his head. I'll just know? say this. There was a lot going on the whole week of, like, there was a lot of stuff with the belts. So it wasn't necessarily the first time it happened. It was just the first time in front of people. And my last question, can I have your phone number? It's her. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, I ain't talking to me. I don't think my fiance yeah, would yeah, like that yeah. very much. But she's taking for us. She's right. taking for us. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Hi, Edgar. My name is Karini. I'm from Brazil. And uh, I would like to ask you uh, how does it feel to go fight outside the U.S.? It's, uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, I much, I mean, I'll be honest. I'd much rather fight home just because it's it's easier. You're used to everything. You don't have to travel as much. But but going overseas, it, it's uh, the experience is great. I know, like ten years down the line, I'm gonna I'm gonna appreciate fighting in Japan, fighting Abu Dhabi, and now fighting in the Philippines. So maybe Brazil one day. Oh, good. And I just want to say I wish you good luck against Faber because he's always against the Brazilians. So I really hope you win. All right, we'll take one. Oh, I got the, I got the Brazilians <laughs> in my you. back pocket for once. It's it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Thank you. What's the hardest part about fighting away from home, especially so far away from home, which you do? Is it the flight? Is it trying to find the right food? Is it the weight cut? Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't really cut much weight, so that's not too bad. I guess the time difference, you know, adjusting to that and adjusting to the food is, is always, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty easy with what I eat, but some of that stuff's a little, like, like over there, got, what is that, balut over there? It's like the egg, but it's got, like, a oh, chicken yeah. in the egg, and they eat that, and I'm like, hell no, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, uh, uh. She's brave, wherever your daughter is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's she's tougher than me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's go over here. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Frankie, you said you were uh, taking your kids to baseball practice. Uh, when are you going to get them started at Elite so they can? Uh, oh, they're there already. They're there already, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. They're good. Ready, yeah. Good. Good. Uh, I know you take a, 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 a big step in uh, Rutgers wrestling, and with Rutgers being in the Big Ten now, uh, with New Jersey producing a lot of good wrestlers now, uh, what's it going to take to keep uh, those wrestlers home so that Rutgers can really be competitive in the Big Ten? You know, I think they're, they're, they're doing the right things. You know, we had, you know, back-to-back -back All-Americans, like the first time Rutgers ever had that. And, um, you know, if we keep Jersey guys at, at home, we'll, we'll, we'll be successful. And now that we're in the Big Ten, I think Jersey uh, uh, at Rutgers, they had the, the number six attendance in the country. That, that's, like, yeah. phenomenal. I, think I went to the Penn State, uh, or the, the Rutgers-Iowa match, and there was, like, 7,000 people there. So, if, you know, if kids that are serious about wrestling, they want to wrestle in that environment, Rutgers, they can do that now at home. I think Rutgers had the, 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 the third most All-Americans, or no, Jersey, I'm sorry, had the third most All-Americans in the country this past year. So, you know, we're, we're, if we keep them home, we'll get it yeah. done. You ever keep, uh, you ever go in the room and uh, roll with, like, Anthony Ashinall? And, uh, I do, Anthony I do. Ferrari? He actually, uh, he's an he's a, he, assistant coach at Elite now. So, uh, awesome. Yeah, we got him. We awesome. Got him good. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Continue success, Frankie. You got it. Thank All you. All right. Hey, Frankie, uh, big fan. Just wondering, um, I know Conor McGregor's probably a pain in the ass uh, listening to him talk at 145, but do you uh, like that he's kind of generated a little more hype at the 145 division, uh, building up the bigger fights and stuff? Absolutely, man. You know, I I'm not a hater, man. I, you know, a lot of people, I think, hate on him a little bit. I mean, he definitely does have a big mouth, and he says some stuff that's, you know, a little disrespectful at times, but he has brought a lot of attention to, to our weight class. Uh, people are talking about us m more so than some of the bigger guys now because of him. Um, it's just, you know, he's got to, he's, as long as he keeps backing it up, he can keep doing it. But if he doesn't back it up, we'll see how long it'll last. And the other question, just, uh, is there any fighter other than obviously the champ that you would want to fight before your career's over? Any uh, potential opponent? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of beeline for that title right now. You know, obviously I got to take care of business May 16th. Uh, you know, I, I think fights like Uriah, though. You know, I mean, he's a legend. And, um, it's, you know, it's a big, you know, they call it a super fighter. It's a big time fight, but fights like that. All right, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's a fight people have been waiting for for yeah, a long time. Yeah, a long time. People have been talking about it, and, you know, finally get to give it to the, give it to the fans. Yeah, it'll be fun. Hi, right, Frank. I want to just say that Jersey rocks. Ooh, Uriah sorry, Faber's going to have his backside handed to him. And from one little guy to another, I need a T-shirt, man. Hey, all right, I got you. I got <laughs> you. I got you. Sorry. Uh, well, know. apparently he doesn't want it. There you go. He don't want it. All right. Okay, no. bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll give it to him We'll get later, you later. Maybe. We'll get you later. How you doing, Frankie? So I, I really don't have a question. My daughter's seen everybody coming up, so she oh. wanted to uh, come awesome. up and say hi. So How you doing, say honey? Hi. Say hi, Frankie. Hi, Frankie. Thank you, man. It's adorable. Oh, wow. <laughs> How old is she? Two. Two. Aww. Yeah. It's beautiful, good. man. Thank you. Hey, good luck, okay? Thank you, brother. How old is your little girl? My daughter is 10 months old. Wow. Months. You got a full house. Full house is right. A little busy. Two boys, a daughter. I got a, do a new dog. I don't know what I'm thinking, man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. Yeah. Hmm. All right, you're brave. Yes, <laughs> yes. Hi, Frankie. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Quick question for you. Everybody knows that MMA struggles recently with PED use. Um, the UFC has definitely raised the bar in testing procedures, so that's amazing. Um, regarding out-of-competition testing, how do you think that affects whether or not a fighter should be allowed to compete on fight night? Yeah, I think, I mean, if you get pop test, pop positive for PEDs out of competition, I mean, it's, you should have a penalty, you know? It should be yeah. uh, kind of what they're doing. They're definitely taking the right steps to, you know, get rid of PEDs. It's, you know, it's just, uh, it's cheating. I mean, you know, I did say I, I, I don't care if they have, I mean, I'll fight anybody. You can be on them. I still feel like I'll beat them anyway. But, I mean, you want this to be a safe sport. You want it to be a, a serious sport. You know, and, and you, got, you got to get rid of it. But, I mean, we're not the only sport that deals with this. I mean, it, oh, all absolutely. the sports across the board do. Yeah. So, you know, we just got to make sure we take the right steps and trying to get rid of it. Cool. Thank you. Got take it. care. Keep our fighters safe. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Frankie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I want to say that it's my birthday next week. So if you could just give me a shout-out. Happy birthday, Gigi for my phone so I can record it and post it somewhere so people believe me. <laughs> hold on, hold on, I'll tell you I'm not recording. All right, go ahead now, go ahead. Happy birthday, Gigi, I hope it's a great one. Yay! Thank you. Um, also, I followed the entire tour, uh, the Mag Aldo McGregor tour, 
and um, I found it to be very disrespectful. I was actually quite disappointed. I went to New York, and I was a little uh, bothered of how uh, much he was getting away with saying and doing and stuff. My, and your name was thrown in there, obviously, several times. How do you feel about his behavior as a professional, as uh, you know, someone that's supposed to represent the sport or whatever, and just his disrespect in general? How do you feel I about mean, to him? me, it's, uh, it's show. I mean, this is not just, I mean, it's, it's a sport, but it's also entertainment, right? And, and he's kind of entertaining at times, and some of it is disrespectful. But uh, again, like, like I stated before, he's bringing attention to us. Um, again, like, uh, he's got to back all this stuff up. If he doesn't back any of it up, what he says is kind of doesn't matter, you know? But, but he would piss you off, right? Like, admit yeah, it. No, if you were course. Aldo, you would I'd be like, really pissed I, off. I mean, if I was Aldo, yeah, you're, you can only take so much. You know, you try to tur turn cheek a little bit, you know, not really show Because I was having a hard time taking after it. After a while, yeah, and I'm sure it would upset me. <laughs> okay, thank but you. But that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Yeah. He wants to get on your skin. Good He's great. He's good at it. He's good at it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Hey, Frankie, how's it going, man? What's up, man? Um, so hypothetically speaking, if for some strange reason the fight with Faber was called off and you're left without a fight, and then Burrell got injured for the rematch with Dillashaw, would you step up the fight for the belt at 135? Ah, uh, that's a lot of what ifs right there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How about, about this? Is there interest on your part in being a three weight class title holder. I mean, I can't really talk about being a three weight class title holder when I'm not, when I'm only a one. You know, right. I got to get two first before I even worry about three. So my goal is 45 and then, you know, that, that just mystique of being, <laughs> that mystique of holding three belts, I mean, it'd be tough to pass up. But uh, again, I got, I got to take care of business and then get that second one first. How much weight do you cut? for your fights? I don't cut much. I'm probably 56, 57 right now. So okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in striking distance for 45. Uh, I mean, it's, it's 45, like, oh, it's easy, 45, but then I'm also 22 pounds from 35. So that, that's, that's a, kind of a big difference. Hi, Frankie. I wanted to thank you for always repping Jersey, as most of us here are probably from Jersey. Um, I also wanted to tell you you're a good role model f for the people from Jersey. Um, my question is, what's your favorite part about Jersey? My favorite part about Jersey is just the, uh, it's like we're, we're just tough people. We're blue collar people, you know, it's, uh, you know. Can I vote for the food? The food, the food is, is definitely you, good, you know. The, the, the pizza, I mean, you know, if you're from Jersey, you gotta love pizza. Hobbit, but uh, yes. I think it's just that we're, 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 we kind of got a chip on our shoulder here, you know. We're blue collar people. It's a, it's a densely populated state, so we're competitive in everything we do, and I, I think that's why a lot of good fighters, good wrestlers come out of this state, because of those things. Thank you. You got it, man. Would you ever live anywhere else? I don't think so. Maybe vacation, you know, maybe have a little vacation spot, but, you know, my home's here, my heart's here. I understand that very well. Hey, what's going on, Frankie? What's up, man? Uh, I don't really have a question. I just wanted to tell you your third fight with Gray Maynard is just easily my favorite MMA fight of the modern era, and I just want to thank you. For I that appreciate fight. it, man. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Lots of compliments today. Yeah, I, I love compliments. You're a man of the I people, Frankie. <laughs> hey, Frankie, how are you? What's up, dude? Two quick questions. One, I know you train with Hunzo Gracie and whatnot sometimes. A few years ago, he actually live tweeted as he was getting robbed and beating up the muggers. Did that actually happen? You know, I worked out with him that morning after as that happened, and yeah, that, that happened. His knuckles were a little banged up and everything. Yeah, he's a, he's a special individual, Henzo, and uh, I'm just honored that I get to know the guy, you know? Because that was the hardest thing I've ever seen. He was just tweeting like, I think they might have a gun. I can't wait for him to come up. It's yeah, like, he's, he's a maniac, and that's, that's real. He's real. Like, everything you see him tweeting and the person he is, that's how he is, man. He, he comes in any room and he lights it up. He's a special individual. And the other question I have is, like, for instance, when you fought Jose Aldo, and I'm not trying to call Jose Aldo a dirty fighter, but in the two fights with Mendez, both fights had big changes when he grabbed a fence going down and when he cracked Mendez after the bell. How do you prepare for fighting a guy that you know will go outside the rules to try and win? Uh, you just got to just, just still go about your thing, you know. You just can't worry about stuff like that. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know if that whole after the bell thing, it looked like Mendez didn't even, I heard it was so loud in there that he didn't hear the bell. You know, I mean, I don't know, I wasn't there. But I heard it was so loud in there he didn't hear the bell. Mendez looked like he didn't. He wasn't complaining about it either, so uh, I don't know if he's intentionally being being uh, dirty or he's just trying to win. You know, I mean, what's Fair that? Enough. If you if uh, you're not wait wait, yeah, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You know what I mean? Type thing. So, I mean, 
you know, you don't want to cheat, but uh, I mean, I, I don't think he's intentionally doing some stuff. Sometimes you go to fall down, you're going to grab that fence. It's just a natural instinct. Fair enough. Thank you. you got it. Hey, Frankie, I'm a huge yeah. fan of yours. My question is, who's your favorite fighter to watch? What's that? Who's your favorite fighter to watch? My favorite fighter to watch. You know, I mean, I, I'm a fan of a lot of guys, like Chris Weidman. You know, I'm friendly with him, and he, he's just, he's been on a tear. Uh, but mo mostly just my teammates, you know, because you kind of, you're invested in them. Uh, you, you get emotional when they fight. So that, those are the ones that, are, that are, you get more hyped up for. But, I mean, John Jones, uh, Weidman, you know, the champions are always fun to watch. They're the best at what they do. You got it. Thank you, brother. Hey, Frankie, how are you? I'm good, man. Um, how much of your success do you attest to your early training at uh, Henzo Gracie and all that you learned uh, from that ground game? Yeah, I mean, I'm still with the Henzo Gracie team. You know, I'm training under Ricardo Mato, who's the Henzo Gracie black belt. So, um, you, know, you know, everything I, I know is through Henzo in, in one way or one shape or form, you know, especially in the jiu-jitsu aspect of everything. So, like I said before, I, I'm just honored that I get to share the match with him from time to time and, and share a conversation with him because... Uh, Henzo is, is, is the man. You ever train in the, uh, in the Manhattan one? I, I do, not as much recently. You know, it's kind of like a, it's a little bit of a hike sometimes, but uh, I, do, I do end up there from time to time. Cool. Thank you. you got it. I came back for round two, Frankie. Let's do it. <laughs> um, have you ever rolled with Wyman? No, I never rolled with Wyman. Oh, okay. And uh, you got any uh, up and comers you can let us know about in your gym? Uh, yeah, this kid, this kid, Max Bohannon, he's. Uh, I think he's like 3-0 as a, as, a, as a pro. Um, he's coming up, man. He's, uh, I think, a blue belt world champ, pro belt world champ, and he won the Golden Gloves, too. So he's a super athlete, real tall guy, 55-pounder. Right. I definitely think you see him in the future. All right, thank you. You got it. Who are your main training partners for each camp? Like, who are your go-to guys? I mean, Marlon, Marlon Marias, uh, Edson Barboza, um, and some just local guys like that, that I spoke about before. So, you know, we bring in guys, too. You know, I have uh, George Caracani in right now, and... Uh, my man Timor right there, he's, he's, uh, he's over there, you know, so it's the, the, the Russian top team. <laughs> Frankie, what's happening, man? What's up? Um, you're a big inspiration to young fighters. I wanted to know if there were any other uh, causes or organizations that you wanted to plug that you're involved in in the area. I mean, you know, I've I, I done some work with the Special Olympics. You know, I have, a, I have an aunt that has Down syndrome, so... Uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, you know, I went to, I went to the, the Garden State Games uh, for the Special Olympics and just to see these, see these kids with, you know, disabilities uh, able to, to, to compete in sports. Because, you know, sports is what makes me happy, right. and they should have every opportunity to do the same. Right, right. Thank you, man. You got it. It's really sweet. Mr. Edgar, how are you? I'm good, man. Okay, so I have a two-part question. Uh, first part is who came up with your brand? The uh, obviously your initials F E meaning iron. Uh, my my science teacher, my science that, teacher that back then. No, 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 no. Someone I worked with in the past kind of came up with the idea, and I remember growing up being in, in chemistry, saying man, F E iron, man, that's pretty cool. So kind of kind of throw it off each other, and uh, and here we are with it. Okay, so being that you've used it as your brand. Have you ever thought about incorporating it into your name? Like, you have the answer. Is it the iron answer, just the iron? Are you going to I mean, you know, I call up? my team the, team, team the Iron Army. You know, it's just, just nothing okay. crazy. I'm not, uh, I'm not this, you know, great business guy or anything like that. I'm still kind of trying to keep with keep the gloves. But, uh, you know, eventually I, I got some shirts made. I'm, you know, probably put them on my website so you can check All out. All right, well, if you ever need anyone else to make a brand for you, yeah. let me know. We'll you talk. You got it. All right. All right. right. <laughs> Thank you. Just randomly find that guy. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Hello? Okay, so a different league. I'm not going to mention them. Uh, they're running uh, Kimbo Slice against Ken Shamrock. Uh, I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on fights like that, like a, a master's division in, uh, in mixed martial arts? Um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, to put it as a main event, and when you have some good guys on there, I think it's a little maybe not the right thing to do, but... Also, like if I'm hard up for cash on 50, I think I might have a chance to, do, you know, get some, make some money. So that's not so bad. But uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind a master's division, though. I think I think a lot of you guys would, wouldn't mind seeing Chuck Liddell and and some some older fighters come back and fight guys like, not some young guys because they're a little bit behind their prime, but guys that that are kind of along the same same line or same age. I think that wouldn't be so bad. That stresses me out. Yeah, it's I not like the masters in golf. You know, you're hitting know, each other I know, in the face. I know, I know, I know. But at least they're both slowed down at the same age. They're slow down at the same rate, you know? I don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, my turn? Yeah. <laughs> oh, finally. 
Yeah, my first question. Um, by the way, Frank Yeager, I hear you have a little controversy going on with Conor McGregor. I would love to know, from your own opinion, who would win one-on-one, -on -one, you or Conor? I mean, I'm, of course, I'm going to say myself, you know what I mean? So I'll take that one. <laughs> Tough stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have yeah, another now, question or are you good? Do you have another question? Oh, yeah. What, where, how many questions are we entitled to ask? You got it, man. Go well, ahead. I go, just go didn't shoot. know there was an awkward <laughs> pause. I'm trying to keep this rolling. Ask your question. <laughs> Sweet. All right, so I second the question. I was online on your site, and I was wondering, oh, can I get one of your Affliction T-shirts? Um, <laughs> if you hit the link, it'll take you to the Affliction site, <laughs> and you get as many shirts you want, man. <laughs> they accept PayPal. Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, nice All right, talking man. to you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Are you having the best time yeah, ever? I'm having a blast. I love New Jersey. Come on. <laughs> All right, back again. Um, building up to a fight, uh, obviously you go through your training camp and stuff like that, but when you get to the arena, what do you kind of do to kind of calm your nerves or focus on the fight? Uh, do you sleep a lot or do you just hit mitts? So what, yeah, what, I just what's start bouncing. Once I start bouncing around, I, you know, I, I get settled. You know, you walk, I, I don't really get nervous anymore until I guess, you know, like when I'm about to walk to the arena and I start feeling the butterflies. As soon as I start moving around, I'm good to go. And what's your first thought as soon as you kind of, you know, you make your way through entrance? Well, you run through the entrance and then you get up the stairs and they kind of get into the octagon. What's your first kind of thought? Do you think, do you, do you notice a crowd thinking, bloody hell, man, this is a big crowd? Or do you just focus directly on your opponent? Because you know? I mean, you obviously sometimes you, in mid-circle. You definitely battle. feel the energy in the building. But uh, I try to just have tunnel vision on my opponent, focus on everything my coach is telling me. Usually my coach is in my ear saying, you know, remember to do this, remember to do that. Yeah. Tunnel vision on my opponent, you know, yeah. and uh, some disrespectful thoughts going through my head. You know what I mean? Just uh, let's run through this guy. Let's get this job done. And, and during the fight, do you find it quite easy to hear your coaches throughout the whole noise? I do. I can zero in on them really well. You know, uh, um, I'm almost like a robot in there. You know, like my coach is playing a video game and I'm, I'm the character. You know, he says something and I go right to it. And one more question. Say if Joe Rogan and Goldie or whoever's doing the commentary, Say if you're up again, can you actually hear them kind of saying what he's trying to do? You think, oh, hold on a minute, you're trying to give him a game plan away or something, you know, shut up, Joe. So, sometimes you can hear him. You can, yeah. you can. I don't think that, I mean, I know he, I don't know if he's giving my game plan away. I didn't think of that one. Uh, <laughs> hey, keep it down a little bit over here. So <laughs> like, he's going to try and do this, take that on the hook, you know. It's like, oh, hold on a minute, man. Cool, thank you very much. You got it, man. You sprint to the octagon. Yeah, like everybody I'm, struggles to keep up with you. Our guys who walk everybody to the octagon, security, your corner, you're just like, going past yeah, everyone, you don't yeah. care. Yeah, I, I, you know, I feel like I've waited so long to get there. I'm not going to, you know, mosey my way out and make it any longer. I want to get there and get this, get this show on the road. Selfishly, I wish you would take longer because you have a really good walkout song. I know, I know. So I definitely, uh, I feel like we don't get Maybe I should hold of off on the run, let yeah. it play a little bit, yeah. but I can't help it. As soon as I hear it, I'm, I'm gone for that cage. All right, maybe we can hold you in a minute so we can hear it a little yeah, longer. Right, right. Perfect. <laughs> I got one for each of you. Megan, I know you're uh, engaged to Joe. I was wondering if you yeah. do any training yourself. Uh, uh, well, I, I hit pads, but I don't spar or do No sparring, just stick to no, the microphone? No, yeah. yeah. But I do, I hit mitts quite often, so cool. it's one of my favorite things to do. But, cool. no, I, I leave it to the professionals. My job is to just ask them questions and make them look good, but I try to understand every aspect of the sport that I can. So if I don't understand something, I'll have him, like, walk me through it, especially in the jiu-jitsu. I'm like, hey, Yeah, I know they got some sports. tough chicks there, so. They do. I didn't know if you were one of them. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. And, uh, <laughs> For Frankie, you know, Jersey was one of the first states to legalize MMA. And uh, do you think once they're in New York, you know, they're going to show us as much love? Because they pretty much have an event here, you know, once or twice a year. So do you think they're going to show us as much love or kind of forget about us? No, I don't think so. I think they'll be here. I know the commission here is, is, is top notch, some of the best in the country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I still think we'll, we'll, we'll get our shine here. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say, I think your last performance was one of your best against Cub. And, uh, Good luck to your, with your eye favor. Thank you, brother. That was an amazing fight. Yeah. Um, these three questions will be our, our last ones. So these three guys, you're our last questions before Frankie has to run. All right, what's up, man? I saw a short line, so I just came back up. Why not? Uh, I, I might start some trouble here, but uh, in a potential matchup between you and uh, Joseph Benavidez, if it would ever come to fruition, what would happen? Uh, you know, I mean, he, I like Joe a lot, and he's a little guy. I'm bigger, and I actually, he actually, I actually can call someone a little guy. It's kind of funny, but... Uh, He's a lot smaller than me. Not a lot smaller, no, probably. He's, he's, yeah. But, you know, he's a 25er. I'm a 45er. 
I will avoid that question. They've, they've, you know, they've talked about training together. Hey, with a microphone, yeah. I'm not looking on, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But she just says no. she hits fans all the yeah. time. They've talked about training together. They're on the same yeah. cards together. Yeah. I see what all you're right. trying to do there. It's yeah. not working. All right, fair enough. Hey, Frankie, how's it going? Big fan. Thank you for coming out here. Um, my question is, uh, I was at the fight in uh, Boston for Conor McGregor's fight, and I also went to his weigh-ins. And uh, it seemed to get a little out of control at the weigh-ins with uh, Jose Aldo being the, the special guest. And I wanted to get your thoughts on not only Connor's mouth, but it seems his fans seem to follow suit pretty heavily with uh, the level of disrespect. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're following that guy and they're kind of just following what he does. Uh, it's what it is, you know. It's like, uh, it's like soccer in Europe, you know. They, they, they ride by their team and that's what they do. And, um, you know, they're just riding by their guy. So, uh, you know, I don't, take, I, I don't take any of that stuff personal. You know? Thank oh. you. <laughs> Got it. Hey, I was just wondering who you think would win in a matchup between Joe Rogan and Goldie. But only three rounds, not five. Uh, I mean, you got to go Is Rogan. That a I mean, yeah, yeah Rogan. <laughs> That's a real question. Yeah, I think Rogan probably beat some UFC fighters up, man. He's, you see Rogan's <laughs> videos on YouTube? Yeah. I have. That guy's an yeah. animal. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you, New Jersey. We appreciate you thank coming Thank you, guys. Out. Frankie fights May starts out. And don't forget to check out the UFC International Fight Week schedule July 7th through the 12th. The expo is at the Sands in Vegas. Thank you.